What is up, side hustlers, entrepreneurs, business builders, and dream makers? Welcome to the Study Your Side Hustle Podcast, episode 109. Today, I want to talk about something that I don't think anybody ever talks about. It's probably really, really important if you find yourself doing well in business. And that is a fact that success could actually kill it. So with that being said, let's get into it. That cold open shock you, the idea that success can kill your business, it, it, it can and it does. Businesses die because they grow too quickly. And so I just want to talk to you about some of the things that you should keep in mind when you start to hit that success. Because what you're going to find, no matter where you're at in your entrepreneurial journey right now, what you're going to find is that businesses always grow in hockey sticks. They do. And, and when you zoom in enough, there's a bunch of ups and downs and craziness. But when you zoom out enough, they're hockey sticks. That's what they do. Which means you might be on the plate right now where it's this flat line and nothing feels like it's changing, but that's just because the slope is too small to be detected. Uh, it is actually growing exponentially. You're just early on in it. And so what you can expect is that at some point, if you keep going, if you keep grinding, if you keep doing the right work, if you keep doing the hard right thing and you stay focused, you're going to realize this is an exponential curve, which means at one point you're going to blow up. And when that happens, here's a bunch of things you need to keep in mind because success can kill your business. First and foremost, the easiest way that success can kill a business is simply because when you go too quickly, your quality suffers. Whether you're a service or a coach or a product, when you go too quickly, your quality will suffer. Why? Well, if you're coaching people, then it's because you go from one-on-one -on -one coaching and all of a sudden you have too many people and you don't have time for it. So you turn it into group coaching or you always had group coaching, but now you have so many people that you need to segment the groups. So now you need to hire coaches, which means you're no longer running it. And suddenly there's a quality control issue because the level of the deliverable has to change in order for you to grow. If it's a service, the the same basic problem ends up being the case that it goes from you doing everything so quality control is very clear to where now you need to either outsource the freelancers or you need to hire a team either way uh, you've been growing so quickly that you haven't had the time to be able to properly train people and therefore the quality is suffering if it's a product it's because you realize that you actually sold out of all of everything you get and your supplier uh, can't meet your demands anymore. So now you're finding new suppliers to try to keep up. They don't have the same quality control that you cared about so much in the early stages. And then suddenly your product quality goes down. If you go too quickly, quality going down is a near guarantee. That can kill your business for two reasons. One, if you literally run out of supply and you cannot bridge the gap in sufficient time, then what can happen is everyone who wanted to buy can become upset with you. And that can become such a large portion of the market that it's impossible to bounce back. It's not, there's strategies that you can use, but that's, that's a po real possibility. Two, the quality going down so dramatically, so quickly, means you're gonna go from a lot of five-star reviews and a lot of raving fans to a lot of one-star reviews and a lot of disappointed customers ask for refunds. And which of those do you think influences the market more? People always talk more about things that didn't go well than they do about things that did go well. So while raving fans will promote your stuff, people who had bad experiences will share the bad experience more. I've done this. I went through a program a couple years ago that grew too quickly. It was a coaching program. And as a result of it growing too quickly, their quality control dramatically tanked. I got in at the perfectly wrong time, so their quality was absolute garbage. And I have spent years telling everybody about what a horrible experience it was, even though today I actually use the same strategies that they were trying to teach. They just weren't able to teach them at that scale. That can absolutely kill your business because quality control is really, really hard when you're growing too quickly. Another one is just internal team dynamics. When you're growing quickly, you're hiring quickly so that you can keep up with it, which means just like with the quality of the service, everybody's probably under trained right now. You have salesmen who might be really good at selling, but they don't understand your core values. They're selling the wrong people. And now you have two reasons why people don't like your product. One is because the quality, but another one is because they're not good fits for it in the first place. And then you have internal dynamics that 
maybe you've never managed such a large team before. You don't know the, how the correct infrastructure. You've grown so quickly that you have so many new hires that the internals are falling apart. And that can kill your business because it can literally implode on itself and people can quit in mass, mass exoduses or things can become so dysfunctional that things aren't getting done anymore. And that can kill your business too. And then the last reason that success could actually kill your business is that it could actually create cash flow struggles. What? But I have a ton of more customers. How could this create cash flow struggles? Because when you have a lot of things going on, it's easy to get distracted. When you see the cash flow coming in, it's easy to lose track of what your profit margins are. And often when we scale, our profit margins are going down. So uh, it's just very easy to get distracted and to not realize where the finances are actually resting and to not realize that because of the other mentioned issues that your lifetime value has been zapped and therefore your ads are no longer profitable and you don't know that yet, but you're scaling your ads up and suddenly three months later, whoa, I'm $500,000 in the hole. I thought I was doing so well. I don't know how to get out of this. Whew. It's a lot. So what's the solution? Well, one is that you can recognize these things ahead of time. And so you can start preparing for success and you can start preparing for the success you're going to see so that when it happens, you're ready for it. Two, I've had to do this in my business, is you can intentionally throttle your own growth. I think in many cases, that's the wisest decision you can make, just given the landscape of where you're at. There's other options, but I have had to throttle my own growth. And that was when I was having a conversation with a joint venture opportunity and the guy's company is much larger than mine. And I mean, much larger than mine. I'm a solopreneur. I don't have a team yet. I have a couple of VAs, but I don't have a team yet of any sort. I do the deliverables. I do the sales. I do the HR. I, I, I basically do everything minus a couple tasks. And his company is quite large, has I think over a hundred active clients. It's an agency, has over a hundred active clients right now. We're gonna do JV and he was going to basically incorporate my services into his and send all of his customers to me. It was going to be great. I was going to uh, like triple my client count in a month. And then him and I had a real hard conversation where he asked me point blank, if I sent you 50 people this month, would that kill you? I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's absolutely no way that I could deliver on 50 people. Mm -mm. We, we need to throttle that back. I need to take on less clients at a time. We need to integrate slowly. And then I can build the team and the infrastructure around it to make sure that I can take on all of them. And then he's like, yeah, I don't think that I want to drip it to my clients. I want to be able to offer it to everybody. So I don't think this partner is gonna work. Okay, because he was absolutely right. I could not take on his entire client load at once. And I couldn't take on a third of his client load at once probably. So it didn't happen. I think that's a wise decision because market opinion is so, so valuable and so, so hard to fix once it's ruined. Anyway, those are some of the ways that success can kill your business. Food for thought, as you're growing, you might wanna start strategizing and planning for the success that you will see if you stay determined. And that way, when you get there, you're in a position where you don't allow it to kill your business. Be back in your buzz again very soon. Love y'all. God bless.